Hey guys, I'm Larson the Wolf, I'm here with Simple Fox, and we're going to talk about Far Cry 5, the game we just finished. Alright, so, TLDR, 1 out of 10, what do you give it? 7. That's about where I put it at, 7. Would you say this is... Did you play any of the other Far nope. Cry games? No? Nope! I would say this is less than... I backseated a good bit of number 3 with my brother. I, I would say this is less than Far Cry 3. I don't think it was necessarily bad. I had fun in it, but it... We did the entire co-op together. It was not... That was not meant to be a game in co-op. Yes. <laughs> okay, if they... Well, obviously, everybody in the internet's jumping on the co-op being... It's glitched as hell. If it wasn't glitched as hell... It, would it be good? I, yeah, that's the thing. Is, is I started playing this in single player. I almost did the first... Um, uh, a bit in single player, one of the generals in single player. Didn't experience any glitches whatsoever. As soon as we booted up multiplayer, glitches everywhere. It, it almost broke the game. It was to the point where if that was the same way in single player, it probably wouldn't be shippable. I'm yeah. not sure how you feel about it. There was a whole scene with, uh, what was the first guy? Was it well, Jacob Seed? We went for Jacob, then Faith, then that may have been wrong. John. I thought it was John, Jacob. We essentially did the guy who was the yes man in recruiting. Then we did Faith. Then we did the ex-military. Literally the yes man. The one that's, his whole thing is say yes. Say yes. And yeah. he was in charge of recruiting. Right. Well, we did him first. And there's a whole scene where he's baptizing you and washing you of your sins and all. He's all being crazy and shit. And there's a truck in the background. You weren't experiencing it, but I was. The truck in the background was just going up and down, making all the noise in the world. Like the hard drive. Yeah, right. And, it, and it's a cut scene, so it must have be a must have been a, um, a, a rendered cut scene, one in the game engine. It's not a video that was playing, but just nonstop in the background. And it, I was like, "What is he saying? I can't understand a damn word he's saying because it was making so much noise." And it had situations where, especially toward the end of the our experience where like cars and shit would fly off into nowhere yeah you just come up and it like a little dink and then suddenly we'd get out of the car or hear a turn around it's like where'd the car go and it, it learned it to the fly ground. it learned to fly for a half second and we suddenly saw it collide with a tree 30 meters away mm -hmm. so it was that was not great mm -mm. Hey, and then even just in driving it was because I think I joined one of your games at one point and it was just like lag jumping really mm. quickly, really small. Well, for whoever was the essentially joined the game. Yeah, the host had a better gaming experience, it seemed, than whoever was. I still got a little bit of glitch. A little, well, yeah, of course, but I'm saying in general, it seemed like I was experiencing far more uh, problems than you were. Yeah, pretty much. But I was the host based on that, so that probably, yeah. It was just the connection bugs were probably tearing it down. But, okay, skipping that glaring problem with it, graphics-wise? It's okay. I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't think it was bad. I thought the animation was pretty shitty. Like, the idle animations of walking upstairs and whatnot, and, like, just even the cutscene animation I thought was pretty underwhelming. Yeah, like, they just didn't have a lot of motion to themselves. Yeah, they much. just didn't have... If... It, this is dumb. It felt like a video game. It didn't feel like it was high budget. It didn't feel like it took it. They, it felt like they were just filling in the blank as he needs to be moving and doing stuff. It didn't feel like they were doing anything very interesting with the animation. With the exception of the very beginning. I think uh, uh, the father in the very beginning when he's upside down in the helicopter and that whole crash scene. Yes. I thought the animation and was he, pretty well, good. Well, then there. he jumps on a vehicle and starts preaching. Reaching, so that starts interesting dynamics of it, but the rest of it's usually just not that we need a freaking lucha libre match, but it does seem like the cut, a lot of the cutscenes were just people standing there talking to you, right? And that was about it. Even with some of the um, when you are confronted by the villains and whatnot, but in their dialogues, could have had more to that. Could have made those scenes a little bit more interesting. I know it's a cutscene, and I would prefer to play most cutscenes, but they are just sitting here talking to me. Sometimes their monologues were interesting, or like I was scared it was a dangerous situation, but not 
always. So, yeah. More to that. I thought that it was an interesting point that just Far Cry is supposed to be dropped into a remote area, and we went to the tropics to what was the Far Cry Four? Himalayas. Oh, Himalayas. Yeah, like those are interesting areas. And then this one was Montana. Well, the thing about that is, I think it was Far Cry 2, may have been Far Cry 3, whatever country that was based in, they later contacted Ubisoft and says, hey, by the way, we're not actually being run by a bunch of different pirate games and a bunch of, like, we, our government has control over the area. It's pretty civil over here, just so you know. Why don't you yeah, actually that make... That might have been Far Cry 4. He says, why don't you actually... I don't think it was Far Cry 4. Okay. I think it was either three or two. It was an Islander area. Mm -hmm. um, but um, there was this. And one of their comments was uh, one of their "aha got you" comments was the fact that um, uh, why don't you make a game in your area where everything's fucked up? To which everyone and their brother, regardless of how you felt about the country calling out the game studio, was like, "That's kind of a cool idea. I kind of want to do that actually." Well, and as uh, soon as this came out, I was like, oh, it's in Montana? Fucking dope. I want to go there. That sounds like fun. Actually, surprisingly, some parts of Montana are that remote where you can get into some towns that are... This town is three hours from any other town. You're not... And if somebody takes down the one cell tower here, you're not getting communication out. Yeah, that's a lot of the West. Or, not a oh, lot of the A decent a good, amount, but uh, Montana... When you get into the mountains... Very much so. When you get along the coastline, much less, because the coastline's pretty well populated. That's true. But if you stick to the mountain range west, there's not a lot there. I'm talking like the central west, though, like Nevada, Wyoming. Yes, Nevada, and stuff. Utah, Wyoming. Yeah, because Wyoming. Nothing against them. I like those are some of my favorite states, but they, it is remote, which is what you're trying to say. Yes, and that was actually the more I got into this and started thinking about it. And they chose for the villainy the 1980s cults, which are a thing and there's actually some netflix things that movies out now about <sighs> cults okay so we're going into the plot in cults we're going into the some of the controversy of the game so i'm not sure if how much you've been you've listened to the controversy no. that come out since far cry 5 came out so there was a spew of video game articles that were talking about uh far cry 5 and the fact that we need to start this from a different place. So when Far Cry 5 was first announced, everyone thought it was on the heels of Charlottesville. Do you know what I'm talking about with Charlottesville? The whole that alt -right, name sounds familiar. The alt right riots with the tiki torches and no. whatnot. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, it was off that when this came out, or the first trailer for this, and everyone thought it was going to be a white nationalist anti. I, I I hold back traditionalist kind of view, evangelical anti yeah. view. That's what people thought they were going with, with the first point. And then, uh, when the game finally came out, we both played it. It's pretty benign. It doesn't really say much, really, at all. The villains are, well, yeah, you can tell they're toe-tapping around the There's, issue. like, the most political I felt it ever gotten was three parts. One was the thing of, Look at the world, it's so fucked up. And with the very first one, the uh, guy that... We, Jacob The see. Say Yes one. It First of all, it should be important to point out that the game basically told you to do this one first. Right. It said, why don't you start with Jacob? I thought I swore that's what it said. There was a moment in there that actually said... Uh, yeah, but make there's sure nothing that pushes. Well, no, no, no. But it said, you should go here first. So I felt like that was the game that's actually pushing you towards that area. That being said... Uh, he was the one that had the closest thing to any political commentary mm -hmm. that was uh, pronounced uh, cutting, I would say, in this situation, which was the fact that uh, he, he, when he's on his death throes, spoiler alert, of course you kill him in this game. Mild spoiler alert. When he's on his death throes, he's shaking and he's like, look how fucked up the world is. You know it's fucked up. We need, someone needs to save us in this and whatnot. I mean, look... Look who's in charge. Yeah, that comment. Look who's in charge. Which is obviously referring to Trump and whatnot. Yeah. That's the only thing in this game that was the most cutting commentary on. Now, the controversy of this when it since the game has came out is the fact that people were expecting this to be a way more political, a way more modern art piece kind of deal. Talking about alt-right evangelical Christianity and militant Christianity they don't even really even, they say god 
but they never reference that's all they ever say they just say you aren't even 100% sure that it could be yeah, Christianity. They, you don't know. They're in churches, so you just assume it's Christianity. And he keeps quoting revelations about the end of the world, so you just kind of assume. But then again, there's some anti-Christian notions in it. Like, the whole scene when you're in the boat and whatnot, he has a comment about it. You're not in control with anything in the world and everything. You, everything, you're in a determinist universe and whatnot, was, which was basically what your guy was talking about in the thing. He says, you just need to let go, just relax. That's more of a nihilistic one than a Christian free will one. Which boat are you talking about? You when, when you're in the faith one, when you're talking about your partner who's oh. got all the drugs and whatnot. Uh, the U.S. Marshal. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the other thing. Is I felt no attachment to those guys when they got lost. Yeah, because your team of buddies that you lose, you are introduced to them in the flight to arrest Jacob the big bad guy and then you're separated from them and it's like go track them down what were their names again there was a girl oh yeah there was a girl yeah i remember that now yeah that was the one thing it was like you know, at the very end we were playing it and i was like so was this guy one of the guys in the helicopter i don't know well if they were wearing dnr badges then yes and then the were one... they dnr or were they parks uh, parks something. were they park ranger yeah they, they, they probably were then um but yeah, no, going back to the controversy and whatnot. The big thing that came out, that was the biggest critique that came out of the game, was the fact that people were expecting it to be political, and says you had so much opportunity... Is that a critique? That's exactly what I was going to get to. It says you had so much opportunity here, and you wasted it. Now, uh, this isn't everything, it was just a real popular one. And to some point, I think they're right, because this game really doesn't have much of a much interesting to say as an art piece no at all like it's pretty benign and pretty down the road in the middle it's shining light is probably the location the aesthetics and the gameplay as much as i also as much as i hated the co-op the co-op was glitchy and in a few months they should maybe have it fixed that would be fantastic for that mm -hmm. Man, i, did I enjoy mean our even with the copy play. glitchy yeah i had fun yeah if they if we come back to it in four months and maybe just want to hundred percent the game, I'd be happy. I'm also curious to see how well their uh, microtransactions worked out in this system too, because you had the choice of microtransactions in this to buy in-game currency, but we didn't ever need it. Like no. enemies we made... aren't that hard to kill, and then you can make currency pretty easily. You can make currency really easily. Like we didn't even do all the side missions. We stayed mostly to the grindstone, and by the end of the game, I had two paid to win currency weapons well, like and then i had an fancy ones yeah. yeah and then i had an entire outfit by the way nothing in this game is behind a paywall you can in-game currency figure it out and they were pretty cheap yeah. to get uh, you probably had to spend money if you wanted all the outfits but there's always the point of you can only wear one outfit so you'll grind a little bit of the money so you can wear the one outfit you want to wear and then you're done yeah, I'm just interested to see that how much someone actually spent money for it. Well, I don't even know why it has microtransactions, because it's kind of... You paid 60 bucks for the game. Because of uh, money inflation? Yeah, it yeah. has... Video games should be more expensive than they are. <laughs> yeah, that that's a different argument for another day, but yeah. uh, I don't think... This is going to be a situation in which the microtransactions i can probably guarantee you aren't going to help the games currency or not yeah or how much money they've got they need to make for it but yeah that's why the curious. dlc content may pick that up i forget if that's are they making dlc how do you add dlc to this they always do weird dlcs to the far cry games are you talking like blood blood dragon blood dragon they've already it? announced the three dlcs for this game oh really i didn't know that it's on the menu screen when you boot the game up is it? When it bef it's on the left. It says continue new game options. On the right, it says DLC. <laughs> We're gonna look this up, and you're gonna. <laughs> so, well, this is a discussion for later. But about being not very observant, just another case in point. It's not previous. Listen, argument the only later. button I need to know is settings and continue. That's the only thing I need to know. And you in just a look at settings to figure out if there's a colorblind mode, and then and there is on. a colorblind mode. Thank you. Well done. Ubisoft for putting in a colorblind mode. It helped me so much. <laughs> really, no. I mean, I still killed some of our guys, but I killed them less because of you. Thank you very much. 
The bad guys wear tan and have beards. Our guys just... I know. You did... Larson did shoot a surprising number of civilians. Just FYI. Yeah, or friendlies. More like. Friendlies, they're, they're all tech. They're all technically civilians. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the person can be considered a civilian when they're shooting at you. That's a good way to look at it, guy. <laughs> uh, continuing on, so... I don't think it's a critique to say you could have talked more about the alt-right. But also, the alt-right is kind of... I don't think easy it's... to hate. I'm going to completely defend, because... Video games journalism can be extremely divisive at points because of post-Gamergate stuff, and sometimes people yeah. don't handle it with very much tact. But, um... Putting that all aside, it is okay to say that, hey, you had a lot of potential here, and you could have done something. And I don't think it's necessarily that they wanted an alt-right conversation. It's just a general talk about the situation and ideological extremes, maybe. Yes. But I think the ideological extremes they were going for here is... I haven't done that much research on the 19, like 70s and 60s cults. Oh, you're talking like the... Those cults actually had some... While there were a good bit of religious extremists, they were not necessarily hateful. They were logical, though. Oh, for instance, the big cult idea here. here is this world is going to collapse. And yes, they said, look who's in charge. I never said it was Trump. And if some kid picks this up in 20 years, they don't know that wouldn't know Trump is in, well, that just in makes the leadership. Them, that just and there's the always been aged. contempt for who's in charge. That's always been a thing. I guess that's fair, but I yeah. feel like that was direct. I feel in this day, current day, very much so. There is an absorbent amount of it. I'll be interested to hear what the developers have to say years from now about this, because I feel like this is going to be one of those games, like Bioshock Infinite, we wanted to do this and that. Mm -hmm. But we pulled back on that. I feel like that's what's happened in this situation. Because I feel like that the Jacob Seed, that was supposed to be getting... And they wanted to do more with the uh, commentary... The politi modern political commentary. Current, rather, political commentary. Uh, but I think they pulled back at the end. I think Jacob Seed was probably the first thing they did. Or the yes yeah. saying guy. I'm sorry, we should have looked that up beforehand. But the yes saying guy. I'm going to guess that that was the first thing they read and they got finished down. And then they decided, you know what? We don't actually want to go through with... We want a more sterile game. We want it to be about the gameplay. We don't want it to be about a divisive issue. Mm -hmm. That would be my guess of what happened. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just uh, fucking screaming at windows. But, that being said, I still felt like... Besides the beginning and the end, there wasn't a hell, hell of a lot with that narrative whatsoever. No, this is kind of the... We did a lot of fucking around, but it all seems. I mean, the it, narrative it was doesn't... all trying to take down the cult, but we never actually got into a point where it's. Uh, how do I want to say it? We were really attacking somebody. Like there was no plot really in between it. It was just, hey, we're gonna go help this guy. Hey, we're gonna just help these prisoners, and it was just side missions to complete the main mission. That was just about it. Yep. Basically. And, um... I don't um, want to get into the gameplay. I still just want to talk about the narrative right now, but... I didn't like the father as much as the other crazy people from Far Cry 3 and 4. Also, the father... Once the father... He gets an introduction, and then he's never mentioned... You don't see him throughout the game, except after you beat each of his apostles. And sometimes with the little cutscenes and whatnot. Yeah, he's sometimes I, helping the apostles do some stuff. I really hated how they did the cutscenes and how they got the crazy people to capture you and whatnot. That could have, yeah. It felt so stark and so wrong with, the A, the gameplay and how the narrative was going about. So basically in the gameplay, you're a badass going around liberating stuff and whatnot like you are in Far Cry 3. Except sometimes they'll shoot you, they'll send out hunters. Well, yeah, if you've liberated an area enough, you'll piss off one of the Father's Apostles, and they'll come and track you down. But by come and track you down, you can be in a helicopter 500 feet up, hauling ass on a 1960s Camaro down the road, and then a perfect little dart will get you in the throat. And you'll pass out. And then you'll wake up in a different and area. A and they literally have so many possibilities to stop you. 
They could actually have a so, hunter squad. They just call say you are now being. Yeah, hunted. clearly they're have not a hunter squad and let me fight and lose on my feet. I'm happy with that. Well, that was the thing. Like, like I, I, I love the narrative in Far Cry Three. I love Far Cry Three. It's probably one of my top ten favorite games. But the thing is, is the narrative and how they stop and how you get those cutscenes where you're like stuck in a cage and whatnot all makes sense. None of it's that out of the ordinary. It's they captured someone, you have to go save them, and then they ambush you or whatnot. Yeah. That makes sense. It's not you're wherever up in the air in a helicopter, and then suddenly someone gets a sniper rifle and shoots you with faith that somehow you don't crash and explode, and you wake up in a different area. It makes no complete sense, and it makes you feel a hell of a lot less powerful. There's like this stark feeling of you're I you're kicking their ass, and then no, they're actually kicking your ass. That it well, it's not even kicking your ass. It's just they have these sleeper darts that can take you down. Well, no, that's kicking your ass, though. That's the thing. Says, but, they have the potential to do that the entire fucking time, and they continuously do yeah. that. And they go from you blowing up all their silos, all their freeing all the citizens, and liberating all their outposts, and then suddenly, nah, never mind. We got you. You're under control. If I lost to a hunter squad where they actually called in, like, swarms of enemies, and you have to, essentially have to lose to the swarm of enemy, or you could escape it. That would also be fun. But you'd only be able to escape to another location, and then they'd attack you again. That would be fun, so that, because at that point they're always putting pressure on you. And you feel... I don't even think you feel weak in this game. It's not even, hey, they're a badass. No, they're, hey, they're cheating. Cheating. It, it's more of... I, I wouldn't say they're ultimate badasses. They just have one guy who's amazing with a dart gun. That's it. Which isn't threatening or interesting. No, but what I'm saying is if they're trying to kill you this entire time. They could have killed you to begin with. Quite easily, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Just such a juxtaposition between the power fantasy you have playing the Far Cry thing and just they rip you out of the moment as soon as you get past a certain bar. Yeah. So they pull it up. I really hated that, but yeah. That was so. What did you think about the lieutenants? The apostles, yeah, are they, they called the apostles? They, are, they he well, refers to them as their, his children or his apostles. Yeah, either would make for his family, you mean? Family, yeah. It's definitely his family. I'm not. I, he might have said apostles. That makes sense for his character. But um, yeah, I didn't like Faith. She had very little to say, and her cutscenes were very uninteresting. Yeah, the only commentary on Faith that I thought was like, oh, was the implied rape. Yeah. Uh, spoilers. I'm sorry. You, 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 spoilers from here on out. We're just we're just gonna jump all around. Sorry. Pretty much. Yeah. But there was the implied rape with her, but that was so quick and jumped out, and that also the implied rape also had connotations with it was the actual father that did it, mm -hmm. which was not good, but it. But she was a drug addict before, or something like that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, she was. She just. I didn't find her a very interesting character. Um, I liked the first guy, the say yes guy, Jacob Seed. Mm -hmm. I think that was his name. Nope. Which one was it? I don't know, but it wasn't Jacob because at least the gameplay we're watching right now is the mountain guy. Oh Planet yeah, Planet. you're right. Okay, we're watching Planet Popstar. Um, but uh. Okay, so Jacob must have been. I don't know who the original guy was then. But anyway, the Say Yes guy. Jo just Maybe Joseph? It's another fucking biblical name. But, um... He was interesting. I liked him. He was the only one that actually... That's the other thing, is, is that I feel like they sterilized it after uh, Joseph... Joseph? Yes. Joseph C. They said Joseph C. After Joseph C. Is, he felt religious. He felt crazy re like and yeah i'm hearing voices in my head telling me to uh tattoo shit on your chest and then skin it off religious i'd also say that with the father well the father but he's an overarching character yes but with faith and with jacob jacob didn't feel religious at all no but he did feel like the crazy i believe the government's failing it's going down well so did run away so did dutch Yes, but Dutch was the first is the first character you meet. Non hostile character essentially he's a after all shit yeah, he's the prepper. After shit all the shit goes down, he essentially get picks you up and is the 
director? He's former part of the cult, and he was former part of the cult, because at the end cutscene he has the American flag with the cult symbol on it. With this cult symbol on it. He was former cult, he had second guesses, and he saved you at the last moment, and then took you to his bunker, and then that's where you start. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he, he's, he felt more like the crazy military person, except he wasn't that unhinged. Every, literally everyone on the cult's unhinged for obvious reasons. Drugs, and military conditioning. Yeah. And panicking. Yeah. Um, but anyway, what I was about to, to say was, uh, uh, Joseph C. Joseph? A. The Yes Man. The Yes Man. Felt a lot more religious than everything, everyone else. Faith didn't feel religious at all. She just felt like she needed someone to have a crutch on. Yes. And then Joseph Jacob? Jacob. Jacob, Jacob just felt like it. the same person that's dealing with PTSD. Yes, but Yeah. But all of them I still kinda of bought as characters who you might find in a cult. And while I found the part I kind of liked is, while they're all, all their logic is kind of, while flawed, it's logical. It makes sense. We're running from the government. We need to save people. Well, that's a Far Cry staple. I mean, you want to join the crazy people? Yeah, that's that's pretty typical for the game. Sorry, I didn't mean but, to take your one down all night. Well, no. it It's not so much of joining the crazy people as, like, their, their argument made sense. And it's, well, I wouldn't would by no means agree with it, at least it made sense. Since they weren't just spouting nonsense, complete nonsense, they was nonsense. And since, um, I don't know, I don't have much to say on the plot because it wasn't a, a compounding fact unless you want to talk about the end. Ah, uh, do you want to go ahead and talk about the end? I'm Let's sure. talk about, I, I want to talk about gameplay real quick, gameplay. let's go there. So gameplay it plays like all the rest of the Far Cry thing, games. I looked at a uh, a couple. You could of... not get stealth right. Where the fuck? I could. You could. No, I could. Uh, it was just I always I went in with a bow and always forgot that because bows have drop on the arrows, whereas your rifle doesn't. The rifle was dope. I love the rifle. They they OP'd those suppressed weapons way too much. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do it have... with the bow because that's more. That's more in line with what we would have in that situation. I mean, that's the old, like, that's what the, your original weapon was in Far Cry 3 is the bow, and I, like, used the shit out of that thing, because you could pick up the ammo and whatnot. But, um... Pick, yeah, you can pick up the ammo in this game, too, and you can get explosive arrows. Well, I started using the bow, and then I was like, oh, ammo's not a problem in this game. <laughs> it's really easy to come across ammo. But, um... Uh... I, it's fun. It's a fun gameplay style. Yeah. I always thought Far Cry was a fucking great gameplay style especially with the wingsuits and whatnot that's all great like jumping off of an airplane sh going down into an area parachuting in telling you to go left and i'll take down all the guys that you tell me to or if i see them yeah. see you that's that's fantastic it's great it's it's a really fun gameplay style it did feel like i was overpowered at many times like i felt like perks uh were way too easy to get like, I kn there yeah. was a point where we plateaued with perks and I was like, do I want to get fish easier? No. Yeah, that's the and thing. it was just other perks were like, recharge on the um, companions, the guns were higher. I did actually, as just a narrative piece, the guns were higher, were pretty fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. And I want to go through, because at one point you can get a perk that allows two guns for hire at a time, and the guns for hire will talk to each other. And we had a... A hilarious conversation with Herc and Sharky. I love Sharky. Yes, you did. We played the majority Sharky. of the game with Sharky. Sharky has our gun for hire. But then I got Sharky. I played solo and got Sharky and Grayson. And it was Sharky was just commenting. He's like, "Oh, you're such a badass. You're awesome." Plus, I'm like, and Grace is actually supposed to be like, people know her. She's a celebrity sniper and whatnot. I'm like, this is kind of cool that they actually brought in that that even the NPC guns for hire will chat with each other and have personalities. And their personalities agree at least contextually to what they were. Yeah. Kirk was an idiot it, talking to Grace, but Sharky was pretty cool about it. Mm -hmm. So you you could get some interesting character dynamics going with your side characters. I never... I should have played with the 
Fangs for Hire and some of the more serious characters. Because some of the guns for Hire were really serious and some of them were just... Her Sharky was not serious. Uh, Sharky's intro was one of the best intros ever with the whole... Uh, there, there's some uh, people that are so high on this flower that flower that bliss, the, which is what faith uses to poison people. Well, it's what the cult uses in yeah. general. But yeah, but, but um, they're so high on it that they're basically out of their gourd and they're just zombies. At that point, around. they became zombies. Yeah. Yeah, and Sharky, all he does is he has a flamethrower. This is how you meet him. He has a flamethrower. He has a playground and he jams up disco music as everyone runs towards him and he because it pisses them off and it set he sets them on fire and <laughs> that's how you beat him he's just yelling profanities and shit screaming and profanities blaring disco music and using fire bombs extender grenades flamethrowers generally being a fuck up while he's doing it too yeah yeah we had to pick him up a few times during that mission but that was yeah they had a lot of the Guns for Hire always had interesting missions. It seems although it, the tone between the Guns for Hire got odd with me because you went back and forth between Jess Black, uh, who's had this horrible path background. You have Grace Armstrong, hardened military vet, veteran, and then Harkamania. That's a little tone deaf. Fair enough. They. It, you'd be a lot less optimistic with Hark and Sharky. While I do love them, it's you. You guys seem like you need to be in a different game. It's Maybe it's for a different. Everybody style, else, so. every other main character, is not near as serious. That's true. Maybe it's for a different play styles, though. It's just so you have a choice of yeah, what Sharky with me. Because honestly, I don't feel feel like. The partners added too much to the game at all. They were just someone to pick you up when you needed it. Some, and they didn't always pick you up, and then some... Sometimes they were good for combat. The problem is, we tried to stealth everything, and Sharky doesn't help with stealth. He'll just hold back. If you have somebody like Jess Black, she will help you in stealth missions and whatnot. Yeah. And we also used Nick Rye several times, and it's just because we'd suddenly get harassed by aerial vehicles. And Nick was the only one who could take them down. So, fair enough. That's true. Nick Rye was pretty important. There's the same, uh, what's it called? Uh, not dog meat. What was the name of the dog? Boomer. Boomer. Boomer was useful too because he, like, he would spot. He would spot everything. Yeah, that one, we probably should have used him more because spotting was always a bitch. And when we fucked up stealth, it was usually because something wasn't spotted. Mm hmm. So, that usually helped. I like the uh, binocular functionality too to spot people and whatnot. I don't know how it was different from other Far Cry games, but it was good. Yeah. I, I don't think you had a binocular. I mean, you, you had, had a spotting now. system, so I'm pretty sure you had to have I know you had a spotting system. system, but I thought it was through, like, yeah. I don't know. Well, through your scope uh, it's been would actually also be preferred because. I mean, it, if I have I a mean, binoculars it, it worked, or a scope, either is. Spotting worked through your scope too, though. But you had to hold it. It didn't work as quickly. Yeah, th no, that's what I'm saying. I like that functionality, that you could scope with your binocular beforehand. And then through the scope, if you see someone, you can hold it on them and then spot them. That, I like that. Yeah. yeah I think it should also... And also, the binoculars are generally easier to use. Yeah, but I still... you could swivel faster. You could swivel faster. There was a good bit more... It was easier to zoom in one eye. You had a variable zoom other than just times four and times eight zoom but i should still be able to quickly and easily spot with my scope not the hold it on the guy hold it on the guy i need to be spotting other people thank you it should still be quick and easy easy and the scope had less of a field of a scope had less of a fuel field of view while the binoculars were wider so you could still spot more people that makes sense yeah it does but it still should be easy to spot people with it scope i didn't I didn't spot people with my scope because it was slow and I could do it faster with my binoculars. It should still be the same speed. Okay, fair enough. But I also didn't use scope right. So I spotted all of them and then... Yeah, I don't know why you kept that bow. Because it was kind of fun. It was fun to use. And every now and then I would get brutal kills in front of you. I was bitching about the animation earlier, but I gotta say the takedown animations are as beautiful as ever in this game. I love the takedown animations. 
There was you a actually did takedowns. I didn't. I, I love takedowns. Take That's how I stealthed. Is I would do that Pretty because much, yeah. with armor guys, takedowns kill them in one shot like any other thing. They're the, that's just the easiest way to kill them. So I would always try to stealth up on the armor guys and kill them. And then sometimes you would try to take down them when they're aware of your situation that you're there. Well, sometimes like the funny thing is, is if they are aware of you, they won't let me do a takedown. So that was the thing. Is, is I'd run up behind them and I would try to do a stealth takedown. It's the same pun, th same thing as a melee. So my person would go. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, yeah, the bad guys. There were a little bit of difference, not much. Yeah, there wasn't exactly. That was one of the things I think hurt this game a little bit. If anything, and I agreeably always say it's to the previous comment we could always ask them to put more in there there wasn't a lot of variety in this game there really wasn't yeah i mean occasionally you'd fe fight a flamethrower guy the bliss zombies were mean but what there was a sniper a heavy and a regular it, soldier unless it's, it was a situation moment there wasn't much variation between the thing there were some things that were like oh the trucks came in with speakers they're calling all the bliss zombies towards you and whatnot that was cool i like that idea mm-hmm but that didn't help in a whole hell of a lot. As a combat situation, yeah, I still shot down range. Right. Range and if anything, that combat situation was easier. Yeah, well, when it was single player, it was a lot harder. I can't guarantee. That, that. I was that was a bit of a question. Maybe the fact that we did it two player may make the it, game much easier. Yeah, that was the other thing. Um, I mean, it was not much easier, but rather the. It, a lot slower, I would say, which makes sense. There's two guns at that point, but um, that's the other thing I didn't like is if you play co-op, you can't play through the entire game full co-op and have all the perks set up. So one of the perks in the game, in order for you to get another weapon, because you have the option of having four weapons, three primary, one. You can have one perk that'll give you an. Uh, another primary and then another perk that will give you a third primary but in order to get the third primary perk upgrade you have to kill one of the lieutenants one of the apostle guys it doesn't count if you do it in co-op so if the guy hosting the game kills one of the lieutenants you still cannot unlock that perk until you do it on one of your games that you either host or you do it on single player I thought that was pretty dumb yeah, th there was also a thing that they, I think they passed it early on, wasn't it? That I thought it was from the get-go, you shared loot. I, I'm still not sure whether or not we shared loot. <laughs> yeah, which should very much so be a thing. Right. And, and that, it shouldn't be a question if that... Well, if I'm, qu I'm questioning if they're worried about people breaking the game, but honestly, because the thing is, is... Theoretically, you could double your money intake that way because we all get the same amount. We just do a bunch of caches, and then you have me go buy guns, and then I drop the gun and pick it up. I'm thinking that that's what they were going and why they made that design choice at the beginning, but it doesn't make sense because a money's not that hard to find in this game. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And b I don't think you keep those guns to begin with if you pick them up. Whereas if you have a store gun, it's unlocked forever. You yeah, you, when you buy a gun in the store, it's unlocked permanently. That should be specified. So it's not like, I bought this gun, I don't want to die because I'll lose this gun. No, you just got to go back to a store if you lose the gun. Right. And then you get it back for free and all that. Same just... thing with vehicles. If you crash the vehicle, which you always yeah. do. Yes, I do. You... There might be a repair cost if you crash it, but it's not much. Which I forget. And, but yeah, once you... Once you've purchased something in this game, you have purchased it for ever. Ever. So, and e even then, who cares if you overload yourself with money and utilities in this, in this game? It's not exactly... Uh, I know there's an online multiplayer part. They did do an arcade, so it's essentially fan-made levels. I've never played any of the arcade. I watched a stream of the arcade play, and it didn't look good. I also... Every time you, we, you liberate bases and whatnot, but there was always a guy gushing over the arcade and it was very cringy. It, it's you like, can make levels and shit. Yeah, this is the greatest thing ever. Stop sucking your own dick, guys. Shut the fuck up. Just go, hey, dope, man. The 44H made a level. That's how you do that.
44H. I'm just making an... Actually, that is somebody, isn't it? Actually, no, that's somebody. I'm, I'm thinking of something else. else. But you could just do it more passively other than just... That's the hardcore type of advertising that's more cringy than actual good. That's infomercial level cringy. Please play our multiplayer. <sighs> we need a body of people to play it. No, that, that might be the reasons for the microtransactions and cosmetics so you keep unlocking that, but still... Uh, man, I don't think I'll pick this game up again. Good game! Not picking it up again. Yeah, yeah. Maybe to just fuck around and do the 100% completionist and listen to Sharky and Hurt talk in the backseat. Maybe. But other than that, that, um, not much to it. Mm -hmm. Is there any other topics before we discuss the interesting ending? Oh, let me think real quick. Uh, I do this. No, I don't think so. We can talk about the ending. Also, this was also one of those games where the ending... I don't like... With all the apostles, you slowly were completing missions, liberating bases, opening up the area, and then it's like... It felt like you worked up to the climax of the boss. But with this one, after you killed the third apostle, whichever the third apostle was for you, it's like, now you can go confront the main boss. Like, I thought we were going to do a few more levels. You could have, like, reconquered some places and make me take down these areas, then go get him. Because the father... Everybody had liberating areas, but once all the areas were liberated, then you fought the father. It just felt weird that there was suddenly... Now go fight the final boss. I just... You beat the third boss? Okay, go fight the final boss. Can there be, like, some work up to the final boss? Yeah, no, I completely agree. That's another thing. This is Far Cry... Th I don't know what it is. Looking back at Far Cry 3, I just felt like they handled their story and their pacing a hell of a lot better than this. That one. was also, your character has to be a silent, well, I don't think it needed to be a silent protagonist. I don't think it was a silent protagonist in 3. In this one it was. In this one it was. Si you're just the sheriff. Yeah, you're the rookie sheriff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just refer to you as Rook. Mm hmm And then some of the cutscenes, if they were going to do the co-op, they could have... I would have appreciated if you and me got different cutscenes. And, like, they don't even have to be all that different. One of them is you wake up on a couch in the wolf's den. We'll put a couch on the other side. I wake up on the left one. You wake up on the right one. Mm -hmm. So, if you know we're in co-op, it wouldn't be that hard. Yeah, but then they would have to... That That's a big cost point in their area. I get it would be... I get what you're saying. It'd be nice, but they would have to redo the whole thing. Because some of that it dialogue... Wouldn't even be... Some of that dialogue only makes sense if there's one person there. A lot of that dialogue does. Because they're talking about Rook. They don't say Rooks. Or they don't register to one person or the other. And then you're talking to... It might uh, also be well, incontinuous if you had co-op joining in and out. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't keep people through. Like we played through to the entire game. But if both of us split and then played one of them by ourselves. One of the apostles by ourselves. It might mess with us a little bit. But you also keep all your perks, so you're going to fly through the main mission if you can start it. Because mm -hmm. my game's the only one that's complete. To be fair, they give you... I, you don't know this, but they give you the choice whether or not to keep your progress from this game to the next. Oh. So you can actually opt out of getting perks and whatnot. But since I knew we were going to be... I was going to get through this game co op I said, yeah, I can get the perks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you can opt out of that if you really want and then, okay, we'll just go to the final boss. I did like the final confrontation with the father because he kept on quoting, quoting the Bible. And every time he mentioned God, I noticed he looked up. That was the, always the thing about the father is anytime he talked about God, he would look up. Oh, which I thought was nice. And after we killed the third apostle, there was always a cutscene after you killed one of the apostles. And after you killed the third one, he was crying. I'm like, um... And a little snot came out of his nose, which I'm like, disgusting, but I do like that touch. It was a touch. I'm, I'm I, not, it might have been over the edge of gross, but yeah. you're but right, was it was crying, a touch. He was distraught. He was absolutely distraught about all of this. I'm like, I, I like this. Yeah, I still didn't feel like I understood the father as a character very much. Um, his, his screen time could have been... You may be able he, to get it under 10 minutes. He, he without did. Without a doubt, 20. Yeah, you know, if I'm going to keep comparing it to Far Cry 3, he was the main. He felt like the main boss of Far Cry 3, not boss. Yeah, because Voss was. He wasn't you had, very. You got present. so much time with Voss. 
that you felt like you knew Voss a hell of a lot better than you knew the main bad guy, Voss's boss, basically. Yeah. Most this, people don't, that, I didn't know it for the longest time. I thought Voss wasn't the main bad guy. No. Most people think Voss is the main guy who haven't played the game. Mm-hmm. They haven't just seen the promotional material for Voss. There's yeah. reasons behind that. I mean, the, the main bad guy in Far Cry 3 is cool in his own way, too, but... Voss is... You feel else. like you, you're attached to Voss. Voss has been antagonizing you this whole time. He's the one that's getting in your face. He's the one saying all this crazy shit to you, talking all this armchair philosophy. Yeah. Insanity. Right, right. All that good stuff and whatnot. You feel like you know Voss. I didn't feel like I knew the father. In the intro scene, I thought I was going to get to know the father. I felt like... You got a piece of him, but I got a, he doesn't come up later. The beginning was written fantastically. Like the very beginning, he's telling you, just just walk away. Just walk away. Yeah, he's like the, in the copter, and he's... he's singing uh amazing grace amazing grace yeah and the whole time and he, they put impetus on it that saved a wretch like me yeah. yeah yeah the whole that entire scene and then he's like upside down in the helicopter and well he gets you, out. you're upside down the father gets rescued out and he gets on a car and starts preaching to his converts yeah and then the, his converts start pulling you out of the truck trying to pull you out of the helicopter mm -hmm. and they get all your buddies and whatnot and then it's like ev everything starts going to shit very good intro, but other than maybe That's... a few radio calls and then after you kill each apostle, you get a short cutscene. Mm -hmm. That's about all you get of the father. That's about it. Yeah, sometimes he popped up in one of the cutscenes of the apostles. But they still focused a lot on the apostle. Yeah. Maybe the father had a comment. It was just like, good job, you're doing this stuff. Yes. That's basically all the father did. You are my son. Thank you, my son. Song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't about the father. It was still about the apostle more than anything. Yeah. Hang so, but then you essentially confront the father, and I still it doesn't even work linearly because you freed everybody. You've got all your guns for hire free. You've got ever all your DNR agents free. He and the U.S. Marshal, and then it's like and your friends, and he confronts you, and all your guns for hire are now bliss at, covered in bliss under the father's control, and all your DNR friends have been captured again. How? How? They used the magic bullets. Yeah, out of nowhere, suddenly that happened. After we killed the third apostle, all that went down and I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't. They could have worked that up into the climax, where yeah. we actually started losing people. Trying, to, we went. That would have been really interesting. Yes, yeah. it would have been. It it would've we would've suddenly been get a bunch of phone calls saying, "Come help us from everybody," and we show up late to everything. Right. And everything's captured. Everything's gone to shit. Now we're going to go confront the father. That would have actually been a lot of fun. And because then we would have felt intimidated. But it was just suddenly, hey, we captured all your friends. Huh? So that's what you were doing while I killed your one of your apostles? Well done, boss. Time management. Mm -hmm. Should have done that earlier. Whatever. Yeah. There, and then you're in a firefight, and then all your guns for hire that are now yeah, enemies use the and the power of enemies. friendship. By friendships, you mean buckshot. Mm-hmm. Well, buckshot with friends, yes. Yeah, so you shoot them and then revive them. Which I was followers. sad that of the people you help pick up and whatnot, Boomer and Cheeseburger weren't the two you get to pick up. Well, yeah. That's not you say that. The fangs for hire weren't there because there's also the cougar that I forget her name. Oh, yeah. What was the cougar's name? Mm. Uh, I don't know. We, we pretty much unlocked her and then didn't use her. There was a good number of the guns for hire that we didn't use. We didn't use Adelaida, which was... Ashley Herc's mom. Um, I figured that out later. Really? Okay. Yeah. They don't... There probably would have been some... That would have... Oh, God. Get Adelaide down and then have her talk to her. God, that's going to be an interesting car ride. Oh, my God. I may just play this game. Just... The switch. dialogue between all the side... NPC the the, is really good. Like it's fun. It's well written. They are just kind of quippy and useless stories, but they are fun. I'm going to go to point B to point A. Not in that order. Not in that order. <laughs> but not, I got a spare pair of underwear. Debatably clean. I'm a gentleman. What the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's no. Ugh. Take a step back there, boss. Boss. But then you fight the father through a half drug haze haze because he just releases the bliss drug around you and then you've won and I do like he he actually gave you the option 
We should talk about the ending we didn't get, which one of the options is you can walk away, you finally get one So there's option. three endings to the game. Yes. The very first endings, when you appear, it's like a staple of Far Cry now. You appear, you, you're with all your police buddies, they're giving you the exposition of the game, who the cult is, how long it's bare, you're the DNR coming to arrest the father of the cult. Yes. You go to the church, it's all creepy, there's people with guns outside this... Nowhere church. church. That you go in the has... church and there's a guy shirtless with AVA or yeah aviators preaching, raising his hands and stuff. And they're saying, "And ho, I saw a white horse." The sheriff is the white horse, and he's like, "Okay, cuff him, rook." And then you have the choice whether to cuff him or not. And you can just like not cuff him, and then you go home. You can press well, no, you can press X to cuff him, but it's one of those press F to pay respects, and the game doesn't actually continue. Until you press X to cuff the guy, but if you wait, I think it's like 30, 45 minutes. It's a long fucking time. The, the um, it's obvious. It's like the old sheriff and the U.S. It's an old sheriff, two other sheriffs, you and a U.S. marshal. And if you wait like 30 minutes, the old sheriff will just say, "We're walking out of here." He just pushes the father's hands down, not cuffed, and you guys walk out, and that's the game. That's one of the endings. So they do have 30 minute. You can end the game almost in joke endings. Right. A time. I liked how they did that in Far Cry 4. Did you ever see how they did that? Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. And that sorry, one that's... made sense contextually, kind of. Yeah, that, for the, this one's more of a... Joke. Joke. I guess it could be a divine intervention kind of scenario, but... Mm, um, where the co the rookie cop's just scared. At that point, it doesn't work in that sense because the U.S. Marshal, who is very gung-ho, would have cuffed him. Yeah. So. But, um, uh, from that point, then you get to the very end where we're at the Bliss and you confront the, sh the uh, father. And right before you get to the final boss fight scene, he says, I'm going to give you one last chance to pick walk. up all your sheriffs and just walk yeah, away. So you can take all your DNA, DNR agents and the marshal and walk away. And if you do that, all it is is you get in the car, start driving away. And the, they're just talking, it's like, we're going to let him live? No, we're going to go get the National Guard and come back. Which was always a sticking point to me of why we never left the valley. At the beginning, it made sense because all the roads were blocked. But then you get airplanes, helicopters, and some long-range radio towers. And it's like, why haven't we done plan B? I understand roads are kind of fucked and I, we don't want to hike through the forest. But Nick Rye's got an airplane. Let's just get some altitude and go west. We're gonna get out of here soon. So that that was kind of a plot hole for me. But you can essentially drive away. But one of the Jacob C, the military guy, his big thing was classically conditioning you to fight, right, and respond to sound and essentially go into a craze. And as you drive away, like the sheriff turns on the radio and your eyes start to go red mm. as that. It's uh, the, the, the song was happened. playing on that you've been conditioned to be Re triggered to. Yeah. And then your eyes go red and then it fades to black. Yeah. So and then the song continues as the credit rolls. Mm -hmm. It's very good. So I'm like that. I kind of yeah. like that, which is, is that considered? I, I would even call the endings in this one the bad and the good one. It's just the one you ran away. And then the other one is, well, the other one I like the most because it's where you actually say we're going to arrest the father and then as he says that you go in the big boss fight you beat him he's down and then you walk to arrest him and he's just like and the seventh seal was broken and there was an earthquake it's like yeah yeah and then fire the drops yeah and it's like holy shit this absolute spout this bullshit that this guy's spouting about the world coming to the end actually came true <laughs> oh shit and then you're, it's a chase scene from trying to get away from, from the nuclear explosions in the Yeah, well you had to drive away in the truck with all your, all the DNR guys were in there, but your guns for hire weren't anywhere to be found, so I don't know what happened to them. And Dutch is just screaming at people to get in bunkers and away from, and more nukes hit the ground. And we failed that mission once, and we're not quite sure how. Because glitches. Because glitches, yeah, it was just suddenly, you failed! We had a minute left on the clock. Yeah. Yeah, it was dumb. But, um... It, while you're in the car and you're driving away, they're all freaking out, and then the father's yeah. just singing Amazing Grace like he always does. Yeah, while the nukes are hitting. Yeah. yeah. 
And then I do like, because you're trying to get to Dutch's, the original actual bunker that you start in, because uh, Dutch saved gave you early on. And then when you essentially get in that, you, no, before you get right on Dutch's house, a tree falls on your vehicle and you go unconscious and the father drags you into Dutch's bunker, knocks out Dutch and has chained you to the bed. And he's like, you've stolen my pen. I want to point out he chained you to the same place that Dutch started you chained out to begin with too. So there's the whole poetry thing there. Oh, I didn't notice that. I forgot Dutch chained you. Yeah. Or hand, he, hand he was trying to you. figure out whether or not to turn you in or not. Yeah. yeah. Like, hmm, this is interesting. And I really did enjoy that. And then it was, we essentially, like, I told you. Yeah. That was, basically that was he finally came out and was like, I told you I was right. I was right that the world was coming to Suck the it, end. Suck it, nerd. I was right. Like, I don't consider that a good ending, but without a doubt, I like that. Right. Because it was, like, my eyes got wide on it. It's like, we're cuffing him. He's spouting nonsense. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh shit! See, the thing is, I was confused, I and mean, here's my thing. I thought they started the nuclear war. No. Because all the apostles, all all their bases and whatnot were in silos. Montana nuke silos and bunkers. Mm -hmm. Some of them were just bunkers. Were they? Yeah. I thought they were all silos. Uh, I know at least the last guy's one didn't seem to have a missile side, missile side part to it. Okay. Well, I could have been wrong. Maybe we the... were never in the missile silo. Well, they, they two looked of them like were... they were all two missile silos. That's the thing. And then the nukes went off. And then in the alternate ending, the nukes don't go off to begin with. Which I also So think... I feel like that was implied that that was their thing. That, that's, that, that was their plan, that they, they were going to start the apocalypse. Maybe I'm overreading it, though. Maybe that, that that's just yeah. a different... I would also ending. say that's not probably going to happen, because while I do believe there are some Montana... There are Montana missile silos, and there are empty Montana missile silos and bunkers. I'm willing to put money on... The empty missile silos don't have nukes in them. No, I think most of the U.S. nukes are in Montana. No, I'm talking about the empty ones. They weren't empty. I don't think they were empty. Well, if when I you, think if a cult took a missile silo over, the National oh. Guard would have a lot of words to have be said with that. So I'm going off of these. Some of these bunkers may not even been U.S. military. Montana also has a lot of private bunkers. That's a good point. Okay. So it's either these are private bunkers. The cult may actually that 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 may be too logical it. for the game though. A lot of the game would ask you to suspend belief and the cult did brainwash a lot of people like they were having that commentary in the very beginning that most of the police are yeah under the, uh, most of at least the local police and the, that was one of the cool things is the operator you're talking to back at base while you're in the helicopter yeah, when you talking go this, to and they were like are you guys okay are there you guys and the father gets the and says everything's fine and then she replies that's good father that might need more explanation when you go in to arrest the father the old sheriff tells the essential radio handler that if we're not out in, if you don't hear for us from us in 15 minutes, shit went down, call the National Guard. Well, shit went down, the father answered it, and she went, yes, father. So, the local ones were corrupt. Just explain that a little bit better. Okay. Having the nukes go off in one ending and not in the other, I feel, is a little contextually... I don't know, I feel as if both endings should have the same... The next sequence of events is the same. And I do like how and neither the, were technically the good ending. Yeah, well, the other thing is you don't see the missile come down with the nuclear explosion. It just too. explodes. It just explodes. So, but then again, maybe we weren't at the angle to see it. Yeah, maybe. And actually... If I, uh, there's a lot of questions at the end of that. With one. a drop missile, if the missile doesn't have a... If it just goes up and then separates and then falls, you won't... You potentially won't see it hit the ground. I mean, it would be hard to see. I know it would have taken a lot of uh, developer money, but I would, really would have liked the ability to walk around a post-nuclear. Yeah, in post. I do like how the main screen, like since we had the nukes drop in our ending, the home screen turned into like a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Mm -hmm. And and I do appreciate after you kill the father, there is a post game of just screwing around. Mm -hmm. um, I wish Zelda had that, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Better so. Any other last minute? Not that I can remember. Alright, well, thanks guys. See you later.